Welcome back to the fourth installment of our little episodes, where we take a table rasa, a unfinished slate, or an empty slate, and create a small skirmish map. In the last episode, we did a, we did try to make this map come alive a bit while adding some small terrain features. In this session, we're going to talk to you about map entities, placing hostiles, and altering a few settings. Now, since you've seen this this map in the last episode, I've done some small, small changes. Purely aesthetic. Now, I mixed some things up. That's a nice thing to do to make things come alive a bit more. I added some arid trees to the temperate trees, creating a bit of diversity in our forests. I also added some blockers, like these ruins. Our wielders can't pass through them, so remember, don't place them in the wrong place. There's also some nice lights and some mountains added just for variation. Now remember, remember, these things aren't actually necessary, not to complete the map or make it, but it adds a bit of life. But let's go with the things we're actually going to talk to you about. Adding some map entities. Now, the first thing I want to do is to create a bit of danger. Let's add some hostiles. Place objects and hostiles. Now some of them can be random or we can do something else. Let's add some random hostiles. Let's add them right there and right there to start with. I think you can see where I'm going with this. So right now we're creating some zones. We want these guys to be have to they have to fight to get where they want to. Now, when, with just a click of a button, I've added a bit of danger to how things are. But I want to change some things up. So let's change the numbers. Let's make this a bit tougher. Now, this was a random hostile. Well, that's fine. That's always fun. But I want this one to be a bit harder. I want it to cost to sort of get into this area. So let's change that up. Right now it's uh, early on, medium, that's all fine. That seems fitting in a way. But the gold value here, that's, that's a thing that sort of changes how difficult this fight will be. And I don't think 10,000 cuts it. So let's put down 20,000 instead. Make that fight just a bit tougher. I can also add high tier. That means that there's uh, it looks like more dangerous troops. The gold size or the gold value stays the same. Let's do the same with this one here. Let's add a... Uh, it can absolutely be random and we'll pick 20,000 and a high tier, just like before. Now, I want it to be natural, but you go to a specific area. So I want this area to naturally belong to this player. And I want this area to naturally belong to this player. To do that, I have to protect them a bit. But I also want to be, make it slightly accessible by both players regardless. So I'll make this fight a bit trickier than it would have been for any other player. Let's keep it with the Arlian size and let's do 20,000 there or even 25. And I'm going to do the same thing right there. 25,000. Perfect. We have a starting position. So in this way, this encourages this player to head in that direction. Easier, right? Perhaps these ones, these will never be fought. Who knows? Perhaps since this is just such a small map, they'll just go, you know, take the main road. And that is, of course, super fine. But let's add some incentive. Let's add some pickups. Let's see. Let's do some resource 
generation. We can do that, of course. Experience of skills, that is also fine. We can do some random mines in, this, in the middle area. It makes you want to go there. Let's put one there, one there, and one there. We can also, of course, make this less random or more. Right now it's random on based on these requirements. It's either Ancient Amber, Glimmer Weave, or Celestial Ore. Let's keep it random for now. If we want, we can, for instance, add gold. But this is fine. This is fine. Let's add some more stuff just like that. I want a farmhouse over here. To generate some gold. I want a lumber camp. And I've only put down some chopped woods, so it look it will look great if it's right there. Let's put on one right there as well. We're about on the same difference or the same distance from each other settlements, and that's absolutely fine. We can make sure that there's a stone deposit somewhere, somewhere close. Could be there could be there, just so your players get the basic resources for an early expansion. But you could also give them some gifts, but we'll get to that in just a bit. We can have some experience and skills. These are places that you can whis visit with your wielder that gives them an experience boost, something that really helps them in the early stages. So let's put down an ancient ruin for both players. That's a level up if I ever saw one. There's some, also some permanent buffs. These are things that increases different stats. Let's make sure that we have about the same for each player. So I don't want things to be too unfair after all. Let's do a guardian monument on one side. Hit nestle up in the trees, and we'll do an Aurelian statue for the others. Nice. One gets offense, one gets defense. Everything sort of evens out. Let's make a small lectern in the middle. Oh, this is turning up nicely. Let's explore the other ones. There's also temporary buffs, things that Help on just a little bit. Make you go faster or slower, for instance. There's merchants, wages markets, there's troop sources, but we'll wait with that. There's some pickups. This is getting specific. So you can add stuff like this, random resources, wooden idols, things that will help you in the early stages. If you keep your mouse open, you'll see what they get. For instance, a looted cart gets 900 gold and 3 wood. But you could just add this one with a completely different set. Let's see what we have. Let's give them a looted cart early on. There we go. Let's do a forgotten grave up by the grave site that I built. That looks good. There we go. And we'll do some old urns hidden by the other stashes. We don't want to go overboard with this. Perhaps we'll throw in a few other different things, but this is... It's always interesting to add just a few of these, giving your players treats or an incentive to move around. For instance, stone and wood is nice to have in the beginning. And I like to place them around their own different places. So for instance, there are stone close to the stone mine. There is wood close to the lumber camp. It looks good and it feels right. There's artifacts, of course. You can place a random one or a medium power one or a specific artifact if you want to. For instance, 
Let's give them a medium power artifact right up here by the camp. It looks good. And it's a nice treat for those who actually dare to enter the middle stages. You can place that by a small dead companion. So we'll get both gold and a good looking artifact. There's some vision things. Watch towers to make you see farther. Farseal's vessel to stuff the same. There's those teleports, objectives, etc. But we won't go into those. Now, if you want to make a simple map, just stick to the top ones. It's easier. So basically stop by the temporary buffs. But I do want to add some resource generators. Let's see, we did that, we did that. That looks great. Now this area still looks... I'm not gonna say empty, but it lacks a certain something. So let's add a little something. A damage portal to both sides. That looks great, even though I took away my candle or my light. A nice road sign, I think, looks great for both sides. Like that, since there's a nice junction as well. Let's see, we have all the resources we need, we have some nice random stuff, and we changed a little bit about our hostiles. This is everything you need to know. Now this map is nearing completion. There are still some interesting things though, when we're gonna go back to our nice overview and talk about settings, specifically starting resources and descriptions, etc. But we'll get to that in the next video. We are looking forward to seeing your results.